Hey, bienvenidos a la Crypto Uni. Hoy tenemos un video especial. Estamos acá con Arela Belino de Strange Clan, un juego de, en la comunidad de Cosmos. Entonces tendremos subtítulos para este video porque la, la grabación será en inglés. Entonces voy a hacer el cambio de idioma y bueno, verán los subtítulos debajo. Hey, Arel, thank you for joining us. I was telling the guys that there will be subtitles and that you are one of the founders of the Strange Clan. So to, to get to things started, uh, can you tell us a little bit about you? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Javier. Um, so I am the chief marketing officer uh, of three division who basically were the ones who started Strange Plan uh, and also are building Passage. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've been working on Passage for the last couple of years. Um, but over the last year, we really saw that the only path forward for the project had to be through uh, Cosmos and, and take advantage of a lot of the innovation happening around crypto, which then led us into Strange Clan, which is what most people know us about. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, it's not part of the questions that we have from the community, but uh, what offered Cosmos uh, from besides the other um, blockchains? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Because it was, uh, it's a, it's a layer zero. Um, it is uh, the the interoperability and sovereignty of the chain. Um, so the speed at which you could uh, get a chain running um, and immediately be interoperable with um, you know any other chain that was IBC enabled, uh, plus also <clears throat> have the sovereignty of your your security is yours and you aren't reliant on you know, somebody else essentially being up and running and then you would go down. Um, so if somebody else, if somebody else has a huge load come on uh, where they're taking up a ton of block space, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, inflated gas prices. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, if another chain, you know, uh, really royally messes up the security or, or you know, uh, some validators have been bad actors, whatever. Um, you are much more secure. So we liked that part of it. Okay. Um, plus we were also looking at Akash and Akash had, um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why we liked Akash at the very beginning. Akash brought us into Cosmos. So seeing oh. how they were using, seeing how they were using uh, Cosmos and um, uh, how their chain worked gave us kind of the roadmap of like, okay, this is really what we need for our project because our two projects are very um, uh, compatible. Okay, okay, thank you, makes sense. So now I'll have some questions from our community that they submitted in prior to, to this recording. So, well, the first one is the only one that, that I have. So many of us know about Strange Clan, but before getting into the specifics, can you tell us a little bit about Strange Clan? We know it's a, a game, NFTs, Cosmos, but can you give like a brief overview for, for the ones that do, yeah. do not know? Yeah, so uh, it's a MMO RPG action. Uh, it's an action RPG. So uh, it's very it's it's very much in the vein of um, a, um, it has an in-game economy like Albion um, and um, the action RPG side of it makes it a little bit more like um, uh, a game like uh, uh, Witcher or um, uh, um, World of Warcraft, another third maybe? person. Well, yeah, so World of Warcraft is interesting because World of Warcraft is more like a, um, it's more like a JRPG. So when you, when you're doing different things, you are, um, uh, you are kind of uh, still somewhat not fully in control of the character. Whereas we're taking more advantage of like the action elements of the game. So there is a little bit more skill involved with it. Um, but one of the biggest highlights about the game itself is going to be the in-game economy um, and the community features, which is why crypto is so necessary and also why um, we thought that this game would be the best uh, test case for what we were trying to show with Passage because the game itself, Strange Clan, is built on passage. Uh, so we can go into that later if that's uh, part of the line of questioning. But um, uh, another big aspect of the game itself is uh, that we have these NFT characters. And like you said, uh, many people got into Town One, which launched in October um, of last year. 
Um, and that was 5,000 characters out of a total of 10,000 characters. Um, everybody who has those characters will be the first ones able to get into the in-game economy uh, and also be able to interact with um, our uh, uh, prologue experience, which is basically going to be like the pre-version of the game. It's like a 2D version of the game with much more simplified mechanics so that we can have something that people can operate in this year and then still have the ability to um, you know, work on and develop the much bigger game that we see uh, down the road and still test out some of the mechanics that we think are really important to the larger game within uh, the smaller game. Okay, okay, thank you. So the first question is from Odani, which have been the hardest moments while creating the game and how did the team dealt with them? Mm. Probably the hardest part is that the game community is not um, uh, largely uh, favorable towards NFT games um, or crypto games. So finding good talent was hard because our team was relatively small coming into making the game. Um, and then as we, we had several people who could do a lot of things, but we needed to scale up. Um, especially if we're going to make the game, you know, in the timeline that we want to, um, and also make the game at the scale that we want to do. So the biggest thing has been finding good talent, uh, who's also on board with the vision and isn't afraid of the conversation happening in the broader gaming community. They're much more interested in just making something really cool, uh, that, that kind of helps expand this, uh, MMORPG genre. Yeah, I guess right now we have that resistance from gaming and, and developers, but I think in five, 10 years, that'll be like thing of the past. Yes. But yes. Yeah. And it's going to be a whole nother genre of games that, that uh, we're going to look back on and say, yeah, it makes sense that this genre exists. Um, but I think that there's a lot of um, uh, NFT related uh, features that are going to come to the broader gaming ecosystem. Like, I don't think that people are going to be happy with games that they buy that then they can't um, ever resell again. Like if you own a game, you should be able to resell that game on um, a yeah. third, you know, a, a third party marketplace or um, some kind of secondary market because it shouldn't be stuck in your game library on Steam. Um, at this point, we know it's possible to, have ownership of a digital item that doesn't keep it locked within a company's gates. And uh, I think that we're going to need to see, we're yes. going to see that standard be set by everybody else. Yeah. And on that, you mentioned that cha challenge regarding getting talent. Uh, is the team hiring? Uh, are you like get, looking for some positions? That, that, yes. That's one people were asking as well. We're constantly hiring. Um, the main positions that we're looking for is um, we want to build out our in-house blockchain team. We've been working with a lot of blockchain um, leaders in the space. Um, so on the on the just the blockchain side, there's there's hiring needs. Uh, so we want to hire our in-house uh, Go developers, in-house um, Rust uh, smart contract developers. Um, so yeah, lots of that. And then on the game design side of things. We need game designers who um, have a deep knowledge of uh, C++ while also are familiar with Go and Rust uh, and possibly could help us with tooling um, because one of the biggest hurdles that we're going to have coming up is once we're ready to go with, um, uh, with the uh, prologue experience, um, that's going to be developed and we have an amazing team that's working on it they will need support on the blockchain side of it um, and uh, having somebody who can work with their team um, and um, work with Rust and Go um, would be huge, particularly on in this case, it'd probably be Go. Okay. Okay, noted. So another question from Samurai FX. Hey, how is the play to earn aspect plan? Oh, so... Can you talk about, we know like Axie, people like breed creatures, sell them, or how is that coming together in Strange Clan? Yeah. So the way I've described it to a lot of people is um, in uh, a game like Axie, you have that breed mechanism that creates an NFT 
uh, and that's sort of where a lot of the economy is. Everybody is incentivized to, you know, make more axes. Um, and um, that's how the, the economy works. If for, on, for, for us, we wanted a more complex economy where people might have differing needs. So the way that it's going to work is your, uh, your game loop is you go and you collect resources um, that then you use to craft items. These items have varying degrees of uh, rarity um, and value, because let's say that in this market, um, a lot of people have been crafting particular items and everybody has these items. They're in constant circulation. Um, so there's no, there's no end to how many of those items are out there. So the value on those is going to be lower because people know that ah, it's not too hard to craft that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy it from this guy. I'm just going to craft it myself. Um, and then there's going to be other items where you had to have leveled up and gotten further on your, um, your class skill tree. Uh, so if you uh, have developed skills uh, in, down a certain path um, that has allowed you, your character to specialize in, uh, in some stuff that, that allows them to craft higher level items in that category. So whether it's like a medical item, whether it's um, you know, an item for uh, you know, improving combat, you know, whatever it is, there might be much fewer of those out there and so other players who want to come in um, and uh, they don't want to go down that skill tree, but they still want uh, the advantage that that item would give them. And again, it's not like, oh, this is just more powerful in general. It's that this item allows you to do something very specific. So, you know, um, medical, uh, uh, medical uh, characters who have the uh, healer class or any kind of healer class will be able to do uh, craft certain items that help with specific needs, right? So let's say I get poisoned by a particular poison and I don't wanna you know, uh, suffer the consequences of that. And so I might need to go get a specific antidote, but only this guy over here has that antidote yes. because you know he's gotten further down that class um, and he's making antidotes like crazy. So <clears throat> he's selling these antidotes to people and they're buying them and they're now not as afraid to go get cursed by that thing again <laughs> um, and go into battle. And maybe they stock up because they know that this particular quest over here has a uh, character that you know hits them with this kind of poison. So they want to yes. go in prepared, right? Or they hire this guy to just come with them, right? So that's kind of how the economy works. It works very similar to how a normal economy works, but in a fantasy world that has, um, you know, much more interesting uh, economical needs. Yeah. Have you played Harvest Moon? I think it have some yeah. touches. Yeah. I, I, it reminds Harvest me Moon, of it. Yeah. Harvest Moon. Um, uh, shoot. Um, uh, Albion is a, has a massive economy. Um, they have spreadsheets upon spreadsheets of how that economy works. Yeah. Um, And then there's there's a bunch of others that that we're we're all we're we're very inspired by these types of games because they make you feel like you what you do matters like where you specialize in your class matters. Yeah, and now our parents or spouses, wives will cannot complain like we're playing all day, but we're making money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, so, and the more you look at what the needs are of the people around you, the more potential you have to make. Oh, okay. So let's see. Is Lea asked, is there a uh, date and price for town tool minting? Right now, uh, the, the time. Oh, date. You said date and price? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at um, closer to... Uh, Uh, very, very beginning of Q2. And it's really going to be about, uh, so that when the marketplace launches um, uh, at, on the 28th of this month, so uh, next week, literally one week from today, um, we're, we're uh, the only thing we're waiting for then is the token. Um, we definitely are going to have some complexities come up with the token itself because 
you know, we're a US based company and the US is so rigid on what yes. they'll allow, you know, companies do with tokens. So we're, we have been doing a lot of research on kind of the best approach and each of those is going to take time. So we're the, the frustrating part is actually we finished development wow. on the token. It's done. It's ready to go. You just want to comply uh, with everything. We just have to comply. And um, one of the one of the um, staple companies, uh, Vitwit, they've done they did the token for Akash. They did the token for several other large projects in the Cosmos space. They're the ones who developed our token. And so I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be awesome. But um, that's the only thing that's standing between us and Town 2 launching. Because um, other than that, we're ready to go with Town 2. Okay. So, um, yeah, we, ha we might have more announcements come up on um, how we choose to cut that cookie, depending on what we want to do as far as like the company formation and the, the formalities behind the token. So my, my advice is, is stay tuned on, uh, on the Strange Clan Discord and on the Passage Discord. Uh, and we'll keep both of those places uh, up to date as far as when we should expect Town 2 to drop. Um, and also the details around the token. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So but the price itself is probably going to come in uh, for the private sale, or sorry, for the um, uh, shoot uh, for the uh, whitelist. Yes. It's probably going to come in at the floor price. Is that it eleven atoms, it landed. something like that. It's some. It was somewhere around there. It's somewhere yeah. around there. Um, uh, uh, that and that was right where that was right where like the average was for the town uh town one um uh what's it called uh dutch auction okay so, yes yeah so where we land there is where we're probably going to go with with the uh whitelist and then we have more whitelist spots we have instead of doing 2500 we're leaning closer to 3000 um and uh then we'll do another, um, most likely we'll do another Dutch auction to determine the remaining 2000. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that partially answered the next question that we have, we have really FOMO in this game. Um, a lot of people yeah. are re regretting not buying town one. So the question was that if the town one has priority, how will the others be able to buy? So we'll, we'll have around 2000 spots for, for those that not, are not in the white list, right? Right, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, um, yeah, and we haven't. Uh, we were over the next. So actually, this week there's an opportunity to, um, if you participate in the uh, upcoming giveaway that we're doing uh, for um, uh, for the marketplace. Like the marketplace is launching on the twenty eighth, and we really want to draw attention to it. So we're going to be doing a giveaway um, this weekend, uh, starting I believe this Friday, so the twenty fifth. Um, and it'll go through, actually, I think it starts on the 24th and then it'll go through, uh, till an end on the 28th. Um, so start the 24th and the 28th. If you participate in that, uh, giveaway, um, there are whitelist spots, uh, available in that giveaway. I believe we're giving away three whitelist spots. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And then plus also just stay active in the discord and there's whitelist spots that are uh, uh, available there too. Okay. Okay. So is last also asked, do you have any specific dates for the prologue and the release of the final game? It could be any estimates. <clears throat> I know. We're right. So what we're, what we're hoping for is, um, beginning of Q4 to release the prologue. Um, and also beginning of Q4 to start bringing in more people for alpha testing of the main game. Um, but we think that this, the, so we, we think that, um, a lot of alpha testing is going to continue all the way through alpha testing for the main game is going to continue all the way through the, um, uh, 2023 we're going to, um, because it's a very complex economy. And so we want to make yeah. sure that we get it right. Um, so we'll probably stay in alpha most of the way through 2023. Um, and then we probably won't even get to beta until 2024. Uh, and then once we get to beta at that point, um, you know, uh, we'll, a lot of the stuff in the game itself will become more solidified. 
Um, and then the hope is, is that, um, you know, there's, uh, uh, we can have a much more firm launch date sometime a little bit closer to that date. Okay. okay. Makes sense. So regarding the game itself, Peluche NFT asked, will it be possible to play on mobile? And, and what are the PC requirements for, for actually play the game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll have more information on the requirements, but what we're aiming at. So here's the thing. The reason why we're building on Passage 3D is that, or sorry, I keep calling it by its, its Twitter tag. Uh, the reason why we're building on Passage is because Passage uh, basically has um, the ability to do uh, uh, pixel streaming. So any game, uh, that's that half the, any game, any virtual experience, um, whenever we do uh, team meetings and stuff inside of Passage, we're literally just opening it up on our browser. So you can stream the game from your browser Wow. Uh, from just a uh, 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 Google Chrome browser, uh, and you're good. You don't have to have um, a, like a supercomputer. Nope, you don't have to have a supercomputer. Don't have to have you know any big technical needs. Wow. Um, now there's advantages to uh, just you know making the download, um, but at the same time uh, you have to sort of you know cost benefit. Yeah. You know which which experience you would rather have would you rather just make space on your computer and download it or would you rather you know open it up straight from a browser and have like the quick ease of ease of access so we're giving people both options um uh and then the latter you would there's like um uh there's stuff that we're building for the passage platform for people to be able to um you know uh, basically pay for like streaming services um, and stuff like that. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to commit to anything big on your own computer, but at the same time, um, you know, it's still very accessible. So then the other thing is, is that we are looking at um, uh, making it very mobile friendly. Um, oh. So um, there's a game called uh, Genshin Impact that is an action RPG game that uh, we're taking a lot of inspiration from because uh, their mobile experience is probably like one of the smoothest uh, uh, RPG mobile experiences I think I've ever seen. Um, sometimes I prefer to play that game on mobile because it's that good. Wow. Um, and their download size is two gigs. So oh, yeah, pretty it's decent. very small. Yep. So we have another question from Mr. Finanza. How are these NFTs going to interoperate with other chains in the IBC gang? Mm, yeah, I mean, so we're looking at, um, so for example, um, with, uh, with Akash, you know, we're trying to use Akash for all of our compute. Uh, so all of our compute needs. So basically people will be using Akash's services when they stream the game um, and not even have to worry about like the connection between those two services at all. So it's totally behind the scenes and you won't even be aware that it's happening. You'll be operating in, you know, our coin, um, but using, uh, you know, Akash's services and by nature, also their coin as well uh, for compute power. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so there's stuff like that. And then we're constantly looking at um, uh, ways to partner with other projects. So for example, like Stargaze, you know, they have a marketplace and we want people to be able to sell NFTs both in our marketplace and on their marketplace. Um, uh, and we want all of that to be, uh, interoperable. So, uh, we're also looking at ways to like, um, work with other projects so that they can get passage worlds. So essentially, uh, taking other projects like, you know, for example, MetaRats, uh, or, uh, Chihuahua, any, any of these projects that are doing really cool stuff, um, and want to bring a virtual experience to it. Um, you know, we want to be able to make that, uh, very smooth and, uh, any future projects that are built on Cosmos, we want wow. to, we want there to be a pathway for those projects to have instant utility. Wow. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see another question from cry newbie was, are you planning to enable virtual reality in the future? Ooh, yeah. Well, so one of the biggest things with virtual reality is it's actually super easy yeah. Uh, when it comes to development, um, oh. it's just another controller. That's it. Uh, we've done virtual reality experiences before, um, did virtual reality demos. It was like one of the earliest things that we were exploring when we were making Passage. The reason why 
we're focused on the browser right now is because every app that you use regularly, you use the browser experience regularly. So um, for example, Facebook, you use the browser experience all the time. When yeah, it comes not, to, um, uh, not Slack, everybody has a VR headset. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> the accessibility is super important. So um, we're we very, very quickly, we will be able to uh, enable that, but it's not the priority simply because the accessibility is more of a priority. And then when people, as people start to uh, get more and more comfortable with uh, headsets and also the price of headsets comes down and, and, you, and they're more common, uh, then, you know, uh, that, that's when it really makes sense to us to, you know, uh, prioritize it. Um, even, even in these early times, um, I think that's going to be coming on our development roadmap pretty soon. Okay, perfect. So Don Plinis asks, uh, I think you already answered, but how many town, towns and characters will there be? I know there will be a town two. Uh, well, so it'll be 5,000 and 5,000 or will they maybe more in the future? Right. So uh, those will be the only ones that we sell. Um, yeah. We have company. Yeah. Yeah, we have company. <laughs> He likes to do a lot of interviews with me. Um, so um, those are the only ones that we'll sell. Um, and then in the future, um, in the uh, prologue experience, we do plan for there to be more uh, NFTs available uh, that come out of that game, uh, particularly from Town 4. Okay. Oh, nice. So but those are the only ones that we'll ever sell. So the people who will have access to any future NFTs will be town one and town two holders. And then it's up to them to bring it into the, the public. Uh, uh, yeah. Bring it out to the public market. Okay. Okay. So be decrypted asks, are you considering implementing PVP player versus player mechanics in the game? Yes. hundred percent. Oh, nice. Um, We have lots of different um, uh, connections to that. Um, like even just when you go into certain areas, um, you uh, uh, PVP and, and um, uh, damage to uh, other players uh, becomes possible. Um, so you can just run into a player uh, out in the wilds um, <laughs> and uh, just attack them if you wanted to. Oh, nice. Yep. Let's see, Wolf Pump asks, uh, how was the process to create the characters and choose the different animals? Like why yeah. wolves, why bears? Uh, how yeah. was that process within the team? Yeah, so I think it was basically, um, it, was, it was a pretty like smooth conversation with our artist, Nick, um, who uh, a lot of times he would... Um, uh, first make an animal. And then originally we were just trying to figure out the art style. And I think one of the first ones, I think one of the first ones he made was the gator, um, or it was, um, uh, or it was the rabbit. I can't remember, but, um, as he was making them, you know, somebody would just say like, oh, there should definitely be a, and then they would, they would mention, a, an animal. Um, there should definitely be a dog. Uh, there should definitely be a husky. Uh, there should definitely be a deer, right? And so it was just uh, kind of like almost stream of conscious, like where we chose to make the the animals. And then um, from there, you know, we we knew we know that we're gonna have more animals in the game, um, but like where we uh, where we kind of chose to draw the line was just more about like. These were the ones that we really wanted to see. Yes. Um, and so they ended up jumping in. Like, I think the, uh, uh, the platypus was a personal request from <laughs> one of the team members who um, his dream is to own a platypus pirate. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody has a platypus pirate and you put it on the market, it is uh, definitely got a buyer. <laughs> Good to know. So, oh, now to the last questions, it has been answered throughout all the plans that you have, but Tech Droney asks, how are you planning to make Strange Clan a long-term play in the crypto gaming industry? Mm. So um, we're working towards um, 
working towards being a free to play game. So when we launch um, in, in our well past beta, will be a free to play game uh, that anybody can come in, uh, they can start up a character and they shouldn't need to know um, how to do crypto things in order to play. Wow. So um, sh- they, they will basically interact with the game as if it's a normal MMORPG, um, but then over time realize that the reason, the, 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 the things that they're earning in the game are real. Um, and that's the part that is exciting to us is for that, those aha moments to happen, um, and allow people to have like, you know, um, essentially a gateway into the value of crypto. And those free to play characters were were able to generate income and to, to generate the goods that you can sell in the marketplace as well. Yeah, so um, they will be one of the biggest advantages of Town 1 and Town 2 NFTs is that um, basically those players get a head start, a long head start in the market. And then these players, you know, they start off with characters that, you know, don't have any sort of class associated with them. They start at the very bottom um, and then they're going to have to work their way up in the marketplace. Um, so over time, you know, a person won't even have to mint their character yet when they first start playing. Um, and then in order to really take advantage of some of the crypto features, they'll have to do what, what to us we know is minting, but it'll be something that's sort of behind the scenes for them. They won't have to have their own wallet yet. We'll do a self, uh, uh, we'll do a custodial wallet. And, um, then eventually, um, they might want to get a wallet because they realize, oh, these are portable. I can take them anywhere. Um, and so they start to see some of the advantages that I can take them to any marketplace if I want to. Wow. Um, so they might see some of the advantages of that, similar to how Coinbase gets a lot of people into crypto because it gives people the opportunity to um, start up a wallet without needing some of the details yes. uh, behind the wallet. And then over time, um, you know, as you get more comfortable with crypto ideas, it's a lot easier to say yes to a wallet. Wow. Wow. Sounds very nice. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Ariel. Really. Uh, We're so thankful in the crypto community because like small communities like us in the Dominican Republic can get to interact with people like you developing one of the most promising games in the, in the industry. So really grateful. Uh, We we wish nothing but the best to stretch clan to you and your team. And thank you again for, for being here. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the interview and thanks for putting this together. Thanks for all the translating work you're going to have to do. <laughs> I tried to keep it brief, but it's really hard for me to stop talking, especially when I get on something I'm really excited about. Yeah. I think I'll play, I'll pay some more small to my brother to, to translate it. <laughs> nice. 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 Good plan. I like it. So, eh, gracias señores por la sintonía Debajo tendremos eh, una, un, Unos videos del juego Para que vean que no es un juego eh, 2D anticuado Es un 3D game con, con buenas gráficas Y creemos que va a ser un game changer Así que gracias por la sintonía <música>